Late Night Health Continues. I'm Mark Allen. We have a returning guest, uh, uh, Keisha Gaither. She's a medical doctor, double board certified. And we're going to be talking about babies, bottles, and booze. Uh, And I'm really interested in this because I remember when I was pregnant with our kids, we used to say we were pregnant together. Not really, apparently, but my wife indulged me. Dr. Gaither, welcome to back to uh, Late Night Health. Uh, hey there, how are you? Thank you so much for having me back again. Oh, our pleasure. We, uh, we enjoyed it. It's been far too long. I'm really curious about something. I mean, I just said that we were pregnant. I you know. heard that. Okay. Is that true? Is it, a, is it, I mean, you know, I participated as much as I could. Well, you know, I, I think that, you know, for some dads, they do have, quote-unquote, sympathetic uh, uh, pregnancies where, you know, they might gain some weight, just like their their wives or significant others. Um, they may have, you know, some depression. You know, that there have been some studies looking at dads that uh, undergo postpartum depression just like uh, their wives. Um, so th- there is something to be said about it. Well, the as my wife has pointed out on numerous occasions, she lost the baby fat. <laughs> okay, well, uh, good for her. Right, I did not. And <laughs> the postpartum for dads, I think, starts when the kids move out. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, you, you just you know, just giving you a heads up because I think you have young ones. And and it's uh, the dads start freaking out because you know it, it, you're alone again with your mm-hmm. with your spouse and that's great and you know they say well you can have sex for example now the kids are out on the kitchen table or on the floor or wherever <laughs> never happens never ever happens all right let's we'll get back to topic um, during pregnancy when my wife was pregnant. Uh, the docs said, hey, a glass of wine a night is okay, or a couple times a week. Don't overdo it, but it's all right. That's no longer uh, thought to be true, is it? No. Um, Alcohol is one of the more, um, how shall we say, uh, toxins that can totally be avoided because it can cause some serious issues for the developing baby. There is such a thing called fetal alcohol syndrome or fetal alcohol spectrum. And basically, alcohol is is toxic to the developing fetus, and it can cause a whole host of things. Normally, there's a triad where you'll see fetal growth restriction, um, you know, abnormal facial features, and, you know, organ uh, maldevelopment. So this is something that can be totally avoided. So we just totally say do not drink um, during pregnancy. And the thing about it is you don't know what the threshold is for for this to occur. So why even play Russian roulette? So uh, pregnant women are advised not to drink. And fetal alcoholism, uh, uh, fetal alcohol syndrome, syndrome, Mm -hmm. my understanding is that it it was caused by excessive uh, alcohol use. Well, the thing is, you don't know what the what the limit is. Ah, uh, so it's, it's not a, like it, you can do, you know, a scientific experiment where you have one group of women, you know, giving them all kinds of levels of alcohol just to see what would happen. You know, that would be totally unethical. So to you know avoid any instances of its occurrence, you just tell the the woman, you know, no drinking during pregnancy. Got it. Uh, the and what about after pregnancy? Again, years ago, uh, they encouraged my wife to drink beer, something she didn't really like. To drink beer, yeah. really? Yeah, it was supposed to help with milk production. Never heard of that one. I ha- I'll have to look up. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to look at that one. I've never heard of that one. Yeah, they. Um, I I would say that if you're going to drink, I would. Um, I would hold off if you're going to breastfeed, because keep in mind, everything that you eat or drink goes to your baby. Right. So um, that's something that you really don't um, 
would not want to elect to do. Uh, breast uh, breast milk is the best, or not? Breast milk is the best. The body is really, really smart, and basically, what happens when you become pregnant and you and you deliver and you begin to breastfeed? What happens is in that initial milk, and subsequently thereafter, but pretty much in that initial milk, the baby is getting a lot of immunologic mediators from the mom. So, long story short, with that, you know, mom's immunity, um, the little cells that promote mom's immunity gets into the breast milk and goes to the baby, so it boosts the baby's immune system. So from that standpoint, breast is best. Um, If it's a preemie that has delivered, the breast milk has all of the nutrients that are really um, good for that preemie. Um, Like I said, the, the body is really, really smart. So breast is best from that standpoint, all the vitamins and nutrients and certainly the immunologic um, factors that go from mom to baby. Now, there are women who, for whatever reason, cannot breastfeed. Either they're taking a medication which precludes it, they have a medical condition such as um, HIV, um, which precludes them from breastfeeding, or if they've had cancer in the past and have had a mastectomy, um, or if they're in a situation where you know, they don't have the support to allow them to to do that, there are certainly other options. Um, One option is to use formula. Um, Formula, uh, as close as possible, mimics, um, you know, a breast milk as far as all of the proteins and nutrients. It does not have the immunological um, factors in it from mom, but as best as possible, it does uh, try and mimic uh, breast milk. You know, uh, in addition to that, it does have um, nutrients and substances that are added to it, such as um, carrageenan. Uh, Carrageenan is an ingredient that's made from red seaweed. It is totally natural, and what it does is it helps to emulsify all of those proteins and nutrients to ensure that, you know, the baby gets what it's supposed to get and the nutrients are mixed throughout the uh, formula and not, you know, disposed at the bottom. Um, Carrageenan also has a lot of um, anti-inflammatory uh, factors within it. Um, so it's, it's an option for moms who elect or, or cannot uh, breastfeed. What about, you know, in the Middle Ages they had wet nurses, women who mm-hmm. lactated Right. For years. So that is the second option. You know, across the nation, there are things called milk banks where there are moms who uh, donate their breast milk. The breast milk is screened for infectious um, diseases. It's uh, certainly pasteurized, um, and it is certainly an option for uh, those mothers who, you know, can't breastfeed. Interesting. Naturally. It, 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 but breast still really is number breast, one. Yeah, breast really is is the best. What a, and and you must see this in your practice. You know, you see a five year old kid coming in and he's still nursing. I see that rarely, but it, thank God it does it does occur. <laughs> it does you know occur. Um, you know, I, I have my own thoughts about that, but you know, there are some parents that. Um, breastfeed their babies. Uh, I've I've seen one case where the woman breastfed until the child was nine years old. Um, I think that's a bit much, but... Yeah. You know, I mean, um, isn't that psychologically damaging to the child somehow? Uh, I would think so. I, 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 it would be... That would be an interesting study to see, you know, the psychological effects of prolonged breastfeeding. Um, uh, I, I can't even begin to, <laughs> to to even talk on that one. So I, I don't know. I think it's a bit extreme, but you know. What is that. the what would you say is the the ideal time? Well, the World Health Organization really recommends that you know um, breastfeeding is is really best for within the first year or so of life. Got it. Maybe up to a year and a half or so. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. You did. Uh, you have children. You have children. You have no. I no, don't, I don't have children. But you have Daryl and me. Just <laughs> okay. keep that. Keep that in mind. Okay. If, if you know, 
and and we don't require babysitters. Okay, well that's good. That's which is good. You're well behaved. Right. Exactly. Well, no, I didn't say no. that. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say that at all. Um, our guest is Dr. Uh, Keisha Gaither, uh, medical doctor, double board certified, uh, uh, OBGYN and maternal fetal medicine and director of pre- prenatal services at uh, Lincoln Medical and Mental Health Center in the Bronx in New York City. Um, are American babies as healthy as babies throughout the world, do you think? Are we are we I think that's a difficult question to to answer. Um, you know, certainly I think, you know, the baseline health depending on where we are in the United States is better than a third world uh country in regards to certain things, but um, you know, I think that's a difficult question to answer. But you know, it's uh, I mean, well, let's look at it another way. Is America in general healthy. I mean, do women come in to see you, for example, four months into their pregnancy and they've never taken prenatal vitamins? Well, keep in mind, I am a maternal fetal medicine specialist. So when you're coming to me, you have a high-risk condition. So do I see anybody normal? That would be no. Um, I, I see all of the uh, medical complications of pregnancy. I see the AIDS, that you know, the diabetes, the hypertension, the sickle cell, you know, the twins, the triplets, um, you know, women with cardiac disease. So I don't see anybody normal. I, I don't know what normal is. Got it. Got it. Well, that's a that's a gr- an interesting specialty then. It so it is. It keeps you on your toes. It keeps you sure. on your on your toes. But at the same time, we we don't want our moms, our wives, our sisters to come to see you then? That's true, but you know, I can tell you from the time that I did my um, residency and, and you know, my maternal fetal medicine fellowship, there has been a difference in the the, um, the baseline uh, medical functionality of women then compared to now. Um, when I was in my fellowship it was exceedingly rare to see a young woman with cardiac disease. It is now the norm from what I can see. Oh my. I have a lot of 30-year-olds coming in who've had heart attacks, um, who have congestive heart failure, um, who are morbidly obese, three and four and five and 600 pounds, who have chronic hypertension. Um, so the severity of uh, morbidity that I see now is certainly different than what I saw when I was training. Wow. I, uh, heart attacks at 30. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's, uh, we got to get that unhealthy fat off, don't exactly. we? Exactly. Uh, Dr. Keisha Gaither is our, uh, our guest. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne, and... We're going to continue our conversation in just a couple of moments. We'll have some information, a link to Dr. Uh, Gaither's uh, website and information about, you know, having a great pregnancy so you don't have to go see her uh, because of her specialty. But if you do, she's one of the best. Uh, I'm Mark Allen. Don't go away as Late Night Health continues. There's a lot of talk all over the internet about the remarkable benefits of Carbon 60, and baby boomers are especially excited about it. Greska's Carbon 60 is the premium Carbon 60, developed by an aerospace and NASA scientist. 95% of Greska's customers report positive results from this Nobel Prize winning technology in just four days. Imagine more energy, better health, and more vitality. It's very bioavailable to quickly mend toxin cripple cells. This is a super powerful antioxidant. Bob Greska is so confident that you'll love his Carbon 60, he wants to send you a bottle at 50% off the regular price to see how life-changing this will be for you. Call 720-600-6040. That's 720-600-6040. Visit c-60.com to learn more. 
Call 720-600-6040 now or visit c-60.com. Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back, too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright here now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright here now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthear.com.